One of the best ways to increase user engagement on your site and boost your traffic is to get serious about interlinking. Interlinking is just what we call it when we add links to the pages and posts on our site that link to other pages and posts on the site. For example, I have an article on this site, cookforfolks.com, about how to know if the pizza you left out has gone bad. I also have this other article about can you compost your uneaten pizza crust. So to create an internal link, I find a good spot um, and I choose some anchor text. Really, I'm gonna write some anchor text. Anchor text is just the text that's gonna actually appear on the site, but as a link. I highlight that text, I click this little link button, and then I need to grab by copying, and then I can paste the URL for the site I want to link to. Voila, we have an internal link. Let's talk for a minute about why we want to build internal links. In a YouTube video, we mentioned a plugin that can help generate internal links on your site automatically. For any given article, it searches for words and phrases across your site that could be turned into a link that points to that article. It can also use data from Google Search Console to find out what phrases your articles are ranking for and then use that information to recommend other internal links on your site. I'll talk a little more about that tool in a minute. One of our members emailed me later and told me what he did on his site and the impact that it had it surprised even me. He said, I improved the internal link building with Link Whisper. Building these internal links led to a significant improvement for our website. After building many more internal links, organic users increased by 50%, but page views increased by almost 300%. It may be an interesting suggestion for your customers with struggling websites to improve their internal link structure before doing anything else. This case study was on a relatively new site with fairly low traffic. So larger swings are pretty normal. But even if we assume that the internal links only accounted for about half of that, still a tremendous improvement. Let's talk for a minute about those improvements. With lots of internal links, we would expect the traffic to grow. Someone who may have only read one article on your site will be more likely to click a link to another. Now you get two page views instead of one. Their total time on your site goes up, bounce rate on your site goes down, all good things for you. Then as a side benefit, more of your articles start to get some attention from readers. And potentially, for several reasons, Google starts to rank your content even better than before. Organic users, those coming from search results, increase, and you get a lot more traffic overall. But it's really not enough to just put links in your articles that point to other articles. Using a tool that automatically places links throughout your site probably will help you get more traffic, but we have found that if links have just Two things, they're far more likely to get clicked. First, your links need to tell the user where they'll go if they click on the link. People don't like uncertainty, and they're not very likely to click on a random word in a sentence that happens to be a link. Going back to the pizza example, if I just make the word pizza in this sentence, a link to my article about composting pizza crust, but I don't give the reader any idea of where that link is gonna take them, they're not very likely to click, you know, unless they're just the curious type. Second, your links need to sell the user on why they should click. Back to that example. I could add a sentence somewhere that says, link to my article about composting pizza crust. That does tell me where the link's gonna take me, but it's not very exciting. Again, if I'm the curious sort and I'm particularly interested in composting, maybe I'll click. Instead, we'll add something like this. If you happen to be a gardener, hold up for just a bit. I wrote an article all about how and why to compost your old pizza crust that I encourage you to read. It indirectly tells them where the link will take them and it gives them a reason to click. Now imagine if every article had a few of these. How much more traffic would you get? A while back we published a video on our YouTube channel showing a little case study that we did on one of the sites that we used to own. I went to one of the most popular articles on the whole site and I looked. There was one internal link. That post brought in 17,000 page views per month to the site, all on its own. But we only put one link in the whole post. I'll link to the video in the attachment section of the lesson so you can see the exact wording. So out of 17,000 page views per month, how many of those users were actually clicking on that internal link? 26, it's embarrassing. 
So I added just five links to that post that pointed to other articles on the site and I incorporated those two rules. Tell them where they're going and sell the link. A week later, we looked at the numbers. The increase in just one week had us on track to get 2,100 clicks. So now out of 17,000 pages on that post, 2,100 of them amounted to a second page view. That's a 12.4% increase in the total page views on the site due to that article. There are a few ways to go about adding these links to your articles. First, add them as you go. When you write an article, link out to other posts on your site where appropriate, following the two rules of internal links. The limitation there is you can only link to articles that you've already written. For that reason, I like to occasionally look back over my search analysis at all the articles I've written for my site so I can identify missed opportunities for interlinking and go add those links to the posts after new posts have been published. The second option, which I recommend in conjunction with the first, is to occasionally look at your Google Analytics to identify your highest performing posts. It's not uncommon for a small percentage of posts on your site to drive half of the traffic. So go to those posts that, when added together, make up 50% or more of the traffic on your site and look for opportunities to link from those posts to other posts on your site. You can get most of the value that you'd get from interlinking to all of your posts just by interlinking from some of them. Another option is to use a tool to add links in a more automated way. I mentioned one before called Link Whisper. I think this approach works best and makes the most sense for sites with a lot of content and without much, if any, internal linking. What this approach won't do is automatically obey the two rules of interlinking. So even if you take this approach, I still recommend following up by at least looking through your highest traffic posts and improving those internal links. What I wouldn't do is completely neglect internal linking. As you can see from just these couple of examples I've shown here, internal links can be a fantastic way to boost your site's traffic and help get more of your content to perform better in search.